Sa video na ito, we will discuss Article 8, Conspiracy and Proposal to Commit Felony. This is Article 8 of the Revised Penal Code, and it covers two acts. First, we have conspiracy to commit a felony, and second, we have proposal to commit a felony. Now, what is conspiracy? Conspiracy exists when two or more persons come to an agreement concerning the commission of a felony and decide to commit it. Now, what are the requisites of conspiracy? There are three requisites. First, that two or more persons come to an agreement. Number two, that the agreement concerned the commission of a felony. And number three, that the execution of the felony be decided upon. Sa so number one, tandaan nyo lang na kailangan ay two or more persons. So, hindi pwedeng isa lang. There is no conspiracy kapag isa lang ang involved. Kailangan two or higit pa sa dalawa. Then, the agreement concerned the commission of a felony. Kailangan yung agreement nila ay may kinalaman sa pagkumit ng felony. And then, the execution of the felony be decided upon. So, kailangan disidido na sila na magkumit ng felony. That there is already a determination to commit the offense. Example, A, B, and C gathered in the house of D one night to devise a plan on how to commit rebellion and take over a municipal building. After careful planning, they decided to carry out their plan after three days. So kung titignan natin yung requisites, present ba silang lahat? Number one, that there are two or more persons who come to an agreement, A, B, and C, okay, meron, that the agreement concerned the commission of a felony. So ito, magkukumit sila ng crime ng rebellion. Check. And then finally, we have the execution of the felony be decided upon. So dito, decidido na silang magkumit ng rebellion. Kasi nga, after careful planning, they decided to carry out their plan after three days. Next is, we have proposal. Now, there is proposal when the person who has decided to commit a felony proposes its execution to some other person or persons. What are the requisites of proposal? Dalawa lang. First, that a person has decided to commit a felony. So, kagaya ng conspiracy, kailangan itong person na to, he has already this determination to commit a felony or to commit an offense. Kailangan disidido na siya, decided na, na mag-commit siya offense. Felony. And take note dito, person lang ang nakalagay at hindi persons. So isang tao lang. Unlike sa conspiracy, two or more persons. Pero dito sa proposal, isang tao lang. And then number two, that he proposes its execution to some other person or persons. Yung pag-commit niya ng felony, yung plano niya na yun is prinopose niya sa ibang tao o sa ibang mga tao. Example of proposal. He was already fed up with how the government is running the country. So he called his friends and told them his plan to commit rebellion and invited them to join. Now so first requisite that a person has decided to commit a felony. So in this case, A has already decided to commit the crime of rebellion. And then second, that he proposes its execution to some other persons or persons. So ito, he proposed the commission of rebellion to his friends. Now what is the difference between conspiracy and proposal? Ano ba ang kaibahan ng conspiracy at proposal? Number one, proposal is unilateral while conspiracy is bilateral. Sa so proposal, it's just one-sided. Iisang tao lang ang gumagawa ng act. He proposes the commission of a felony to another person or person. While sa conspiracy naman, it is bilateral. So it's two or more persons, yung first requisite ng conspiracy. So it is not one-sided. Kailangang maraming tao ang involved. Number two, in proposal, the party to whom the proposal was made has not yet accepted the proposal. Kapag yung isang tao who has decided to commit a felony, he proposed the execution of a felony to another person, kailangang yung another person na yun, hindi niya tinanggap o hindi siya pumayag. Kasi kapag pumayag na siya, kapag inaccept niya na yung proposal, magiging conspiracy na. Kasi in that case, two or more persons ang involved. Hindi na siya proposal. So kapag yung proposal ay inaccept ng isang tao, it now becomes conspiracy. So yan ang kaibahan ng conspiracy at proposal. Question. Is conspiracy or proposal to commit felony a crime? Kapag nag-conspire ba kayo to commit a felony? Or kapag nag-propose ka regarding the commission of a felony, will you be held criminally liable? Pwede ka bang kasuhan? Let's go to the basics. The general rule or ang pangkalahatang tuntunin ay Conspiracy and proposal to commit felony are not punishable. So kapag merong conspiracy or kapag merong proposal, hindi siya punishable. Hindi ka pwedeng kasuhan. That is the general rule. Example, A, B, and C are all workers of Geno Factory. They hate their boss, D, because he was very strict. During lunch break, A, B, and C met at the storage room and began to devise a plan on how to kill 
D. They decided to kill him the next morning. So ito, mayroong conspiracy. Kasi two or more persons come to an agreement and yung agreement nila, it relates to the crime of homicide or murder. And then they decided to commit the crime. Ang sinabi ng Supreme Court dito is, an agreement to commit a crime is a reprehensible act from the viewpoint of morality. So the fact na nag-conspire kayo na pumatay ng isang tao, hindi siya katanggap-tanggap. Talagang it's immoral. Kasuklam-suklam na gawain. Pero sinabi rin ng court na, as long as the conspirators do not perform overt acts in furtherance of their malevolent design, the sovereignty of the state is not outraged and the tranquility of the public remains undisturbed. Ito kasing mga conspirators, itong mga involved sa conspiracy, they have not yet performed overt acts. Wala pang overt acts. Kaya sinabi ng court, hindi pa naman naaabala ang publiko. Hindi pa naman naapektuhan ang siguridad at katahimikan. Stages in the development of crimes. Ito, babalik tayo sa basics. There are two stages in the development of crimes. We have the internal acts and the external acts. What are internal acts? They are mere ideas in the mind of the person. Intention producing no effect. So kapag iniisip mo palang na mag-commit ng crime, nasa isip mo palang ito at wala ka pang ginagawa. Now these are just internal acts. Are they punishable or not? Internal acts are not punishable. Kasi nga, wala ka pang ginagawa. And number two, sa external acts, we have two. We have preparatory acts and we have acts of execution. Now what are preparatory acts under external acts? Preparatory acts are external acts which have no direct connection with the crime which the offender intends to commit. Take note, no direct connection with the crime. So yung preparatory act na ginawa mo, it may mean another thing. Pwede pa siyang i-interpret in another way which is not related to the intended crime. Now what are the examples? First, we have conspiracy and proposal. Ito na yung Article 8 natin. Number 2, buying poison to kill your enemy. For example, pumunta ka sa store and bumili ka ng rat poison kasi yun ang ihahalo mo sa pagkain ng kapitbahay mo to kill your neighbor who is your enemy. Now, buying a poison is susceptible of many interpretations. Pwede gamitin mo siya para patayin yung kapitbahay mo or pwede gamitin mo siya para patayin yung mga daga na peste sa inyo. So, it has no direct connection with the crime. And take note of the legal maxim in dubio pro reo. When in doubt, rule for the accused. Kasi yung act niya, yung preparatory act na bumili ng lason, it can be interpreted in another light. Pwede na talagang gusto mong pumatay ng mga daga sa bahay ninyo at hindi para gamitin na lason against your enemy. So when there are two interpretations, you rule in favor of the accused. You use the interpretation which is favorable to the accused. Number three, carrying a gun looking for your intended victim. So eto, yung act mo ng pag-carry ng gun, it's a preparatory act. But it has no direct connection with the crime. Kasi hindi naman talaga natin masasabi na you are carrying a firearm kasi you intend to kill another person or meron kang gustong patayin. Kasi carrying a gun is an innocent act as long as you have permit to carry firearms outside of residence. And then we have number four, holding a gallon of gasoline and lighter while on your way to the house you intend to burn. So the preparatory act of carrying with you a gallon of gasoline and lighter, it has no direct connection with the crime. Kasi nga, it can be susceptible of other meaning. Pwede rin sabihin na hindi mo naman talaga pakay na magsunog ng bahay ng ibang tao. Baka daladala mo lang yung, or yung gasoline and lighter para magsunog ng mga kahoy or ng basura. Now, sa internal acts, they are not punishable. How about sa external acts? Sa preparatory acts? Preparatory acts are not punishable. Kasi nga, they have no direct connection with the crime intended to be committed. Question. Give an example where a preparatory act is considered a crime and is punished. Meron bang case kung saan ang preparatory act is considered a crime and is punished? The answer is yes. Sa Article 304. We have possession of pick locks. So the possession of pick locks, may dala-dala kang pick lock kasi nga it's a preparatory act to the crime of robbery. Pero mere possession of pick locks, it is already considered as a crime under Article 304. And then we have another kind of external acts. We have acts of execution. Acts of execution are external acts that have direct connection with the crime intended to be committed. Unlike sa preparatory acts which have no direct connection to the crime, itong acts of execution, it has direct connection with the crime intended to be committed. Now sa different stages of the acts of execution, itong attempted, frustrated, consummated, kahit sa attempted stage pa lang, kailangang meron ng overt acts. Tignan natin 
natin ang Article 6, di ba, sa attempted felonies. There is an attempt when the offender commences the commission of a felony directly by overt acts. So, meron siyang overt act. So, kahit pa na nasa attempted stage pa lang, kailangan merong overt act, kailangan merong acts of execution which have direct connection with the crime intended to be committed. Again, let's review. Sa internal acts, they are not punishable. Sa external acts naman, we have preparatory acts and acts of execution. Sa preparatory acts, Generally, they are not punishable except yung sa example natin kanina na possession of pick locks. Sa acts of execution, they are punishable by law. Kasi nga kahit nasa attempted stage pa lang, pinapunish na siya ng law. So let's go back sa conspiracy and proposal to commit felony. They are not punishable. Kasi nga, the conspirators do not perform overt acts. Ang conspiracy and proposal, they are considered as mere preparatory acts. That's why they are not punishable. What is the exception to the general rule? So, ang general rule nga natin is, conspiracy and proposal to commit felony are not punishable. Now, what is the exception? Pag sinabing exception, merong bang instances kung saan ang conspiracy or proposal ay punishable? The exception is, in the cases in which the law especially provides a penalty that Therefore, kapag ang batas na mismo ang may sabi na ang conspiracy na yan o ang proposal na yan ay punishable, then conspiracy and proposal in those cases are now punishable at pwede ka nang kasuhan at pwede kang makulong for mere conspiracy or mere proposal. Now, what are the examples? We have tricks. Ito yung acronym natin para mas madaling matandaan ang Article 115, Article 136, and Article 141. Tricks, treason, rebellion, insurrection, coup d'etat, and sedition. Under Article 115, conspiracy and proposal to commit treason, that is punishable. Under Article 136, conspiracy and proposal to commit coup d'etat, rebellion, or insurrection, that is punishable. And under Article 141, conspiracy to commit sedition. So kung mapapansin ninyo, merong conspiracy and proposal sa treason. Merong conspiracy and proposal sa coup d'etat, rebellion, or insurrection. Pero sa sedition, conspiracy lang. Walang proposal. In other words, proposal to commit sedition is not a crime. So, kailangang bantayan ito. Kapag mayroong question regarding proposal to commit sedition, then it is not a crime. Hindi siya punishable. Kasi under Article 141, you only punish conspiracy to commit sedition. Examples, A, B, and C together with other 100 men all met up and planned to attack and occupy the city hall and the Sangunian building and they decided to launch their attack on the first Monday of the month following. Now, this is an example of conspiracy to commit rebellion. Generally, ang conspiracy is not punishable. Pero sa case na to, conspiracy is punishable kasi the law itself punishes conspiracy to commit rebellion. And under Article 186, We also have here conspiracy. So this is another case where conspiracy is punishable by law. Conspiracy in restraint of trade or commerce or to prevent by artificial means free competition in the market. So Article 186 is also another example of a case where conspiracy is punished by law. And then we have another one on the Republic Act Number no. 9165, otherwise known as Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. Tignan niyo ang Section 26, di ba? Attempt or conspiracy. Conspiracy to commit the unlawful acts under Republic Act number no. 9165. So sa Republic Act 9165, Section 26, the law punishes conspiracy. Let us go back to the earlier question. Is conspiracy or proposal to commit felony a crime? The answer is no, because it is only a preparatory act which is not punishable. Kasi nga, di ba? Ang conspiracy or proposal, they are just preparatory acts which are not punishable. Nagiging punishable lang sila in cases in which the law especially provides a penalty therefore. Gaya nung tricks, treason, rebellion, insurrection, kudita, sedition, or yung Article 186, monopolies and combinations in restraint of trade, or yung Section 26, ng Republic Act 9165 or Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. Now, in those cases, conspiracy is punishable under the law. There is also an al alternative answer sa question na to. Pwede nyo ring sabihin yes when the law especially provides a penalty therefore. So, either way, tama pa rin ang sagot ninyo. There are two kinds of conspiracy. First, we have conspiracy as a crime and conspiracy as a manner of incurring criminal liability. Conspiracy as a crime. When conspiracy itself is expressly punished by law. Dito sa conspiracy as a crime, the mere conspiracy itself is a crime. Examples, eto na yung tricks kanina. So, the fact na nag-conspire kayo to commit treason or to commit coup d'etat, rebellion, or insurrection or to commit sedition, that itself is punishable. That is an example of conspiracy as a crime. Example, A, B, and C together with other 100 men all met up 
and planned to attack and occupy the city hall and the Sangunian building and they decided to launch their attack on the first Monday of the month following. So this is now an example of conspiracy to commit rebellion and it is a conspiracy as a crime. And then number two, we have conspiracy as a manner of incurring criminal liability. Now when the conspiracy relates to a crime actually committed, it is not a felony but only a manner of incurring criminal liability. So tandaan, yung conspiracy, it relates to a crime actually committed. So yung pinag-usapan nila, nung nagko-conspire sila, talagang ginawa nila. They actually committed the crime. So yung conspiracy ngayon, hindi na siya magiging separate felony, but only a manner of incurring criminal liability. Example, A, B, and C are all workers of Geno Factory. They hate their boss D because he was very strict. During lunch break, A, B, and C met at the storage room and began to devise a plan on how to kill D. They decided to kill him the next morning. Question, is this an example of conspiracy as a crime? Ano bang ang subject na kanilang conspiracy. It is homicide or murder. Gusto nilang patayin si D yung boss nila. So it's com conspiracy to commit homicide or murder. Now, is this an example of conspiracy as a crime? The answer is no. Kasi conspiracy to commit homicide or murder is not punishable. Sa mga examples kanina, hindi siya tricks. Hindi siya treason, rebellion, insurrection, kudita or sedition. Hindi siya monopolies and combinations in restraint of trade. At hindi rin siya yung section 26 ng RA 9165. So itong pag-conspire nila na pumatay ng tao, hindi siya punishable because it is just a preparatory act. Next, is this an example of conspiracy as a manner of incurring criminal liability? The answer is no. Kasi nga, sa number 2, conspiracy as a manner of incurring criminal liability, it relates to a crime actually committed. So yung sa subject ng conspiracy na crime, talagang kinumit nila. So nagplano sila before and then in-execute nila yung kanilang plan at kinumit nila yung crime. Sa example na to, hindi pa naman nila nakumit yung crime. Pinag-usapan pa lang nila at nagplano pa lang sila. So they just merely conspired without executing their plan, without committing the felony. So this is not an example of conspiracy as a manner of incurring criminal liability. Now what is an example of conspiracy as a manner of incurring criminal liability? A, B, and C are all workers of Geno Factory. So ito pa rin yung example natin kanina. Pero nadagdagan. During the next morning, A and B went inside the office of their boss D when no one was looking. C acted as a lookout and positioned himself beside the office door. B, who had a gun, tucked inside his shirt, gave the gun to A. A shot D and D died. There are different rules. Meron tayong mga rules regarding sa conspiracy as a manner of incurring criminal liability. The first rule is, the act of one is the act of all. Sa example na to, si C, siya ang nagsilbing lookout. Si B, siya ang may daladalang baril at binigay niya to kay A. Si A ang pumatay kay D, siya ang bumaril. Now, kailangan pa ba nating alamin ang kanilang participation? Kailangan pa ba nating alamin kung yung isa ba ay principal o yung dalawa o yung tatlo? Or accomplice lang ba ang kanilang participation? The answer is no. Because of the rule, the act of one is the act of all. Kung anong ginawa ng isa, it is as if you have have committed the act yourself. Parang ikaw na rin ang gumawa. So sa case na to, kahit si A pa ang bumaril kay D, parang binaril na rin si D ni C at ni B. Kasi nga, the act of one is the act of all. So hindi na natin kailangang alamin kung principal ba o accomplice ang kanilang participation. Kasi they will be considered as principals by direct participation. Because the act of one is the act of all. Second rule, conspiracy is not punishable as a separate offense. Number one example, A, B, and C together with other 100 men all met up and planned to attack and occupy the city hall and the Sangguniang building and they decided to launch their attack on the first Monday of the month following. When the day came, they executed their plan but failed to occupy the buildings because of the valiant and heroic efforts of the armed forces and police officers. Now in this example, merong conspiracy to commit the crime of rebellion which is punishable. Pero sa second paragraph, hindi lang nagkaroon ng conspiracy kundi talagang nagperpetrate sila ng rebellion. Rebellion. Talagang kinumit nila yung crime of rebellion. So sa first paragraph, merong conspiracy. And sa second paragraph, talagang kinumit nila yung crime of rebellion. Question, dalawang kaso ba ang haharapin nila? Can we file two cases against them? One for conspiracy to commit rebellion and the second for the crime of rebellion? The answer is no because of the second rule. Conspiracy is not punishable as a separate offense. Kapag ang conspiracy ay only a manner of incurring criminal liability at talagang kinumit nila yung crime, yung conspiracy na yon, it will not be treated as a separate offense. 
only a manner of incurring criminal liability. So kahit pa mayroong conspiracy dito, at dito kinumit nila yung rebellion, itong conspiracy, hindi na siya considered as a separate offense. Only a manner of incurring criminal liability. So sa example na to, they can only be charged for rebellion. May a person be convicted for the criminal act of another? Pwede bang makonvict yung isang tao na krimen na ginawa ng isang tao? The answer is yes, when there is conspiracy. Kasi nga, the act of one is the act of all. Now, number three rule, under conspiracy as a manner of incurring criminal liability. Previous agreement is not necessary if they all acted in concert to pursue a criminal design. Ang meaning lang nito, hindi na kailangang magkaroon ng conspiracy before or hindi nila kailangang mag-meet sa isang place at pagplanuhan yung crime na ikukumit nila. Hindi kailangan ng meeting kasi nga meron tayong tinatawag na implied conspiracy. Example, one night, A, B, and C were playing ML in the house of A when someone threw stone at their window. Enraged, A, B, and C ran outside and saw X. A tried to hit X's head with a big stone but he missed. So B tackled X and pinned him down. C picked up a sharp wood. C picked up a sharp wood and tried to stab X but it was blocked by X. A and B held the arms and legs of X tightly. C managed to stab X and killed him. So sa example na to, walang previous agreement. Hindi talaga nila intention na patayin si X kasi naglalaro lang sila ng ML. So hindi sila nag-meet before or hindi sila nag-conspire before. Pero ito yung tinatawag nating merong implied conspiracy because by their acts, it can be directly inferred na they have a common design. Na they all acted in concert para ma-achieve yung kanilang common goal which is to kill X. So kahit pa walang previous agreement, kapag obvious naman sa kanilang acts na talagang nagkaisa sila to achieve a criminal design, then conspiracy will be implied. At magkakaroon ng conspiracy dito and mag apply na yung rule na the act of one is the act of all. The act of one is the act of all. Points to remember. Number one, the element of relationship must be present to all the offenders. Ano bang meaning nito? Example, A, the wife, and B, the paramour, conspired to kill X, the husband of A. They succeeded in killing X. What is the crime committed? Or what are the crimes committed? By the wife, A, and by the paramour, B. So sa wife, the crime committed is parricide. Kasi nga, when you kill your spouse, you will be liable for the crime of parricide under Article 246. How about sa paramour, B? Will the paramour be liable for parricide as well under the rule the act of one is the act of all? The answer is no. The paramour will be liable for homicide or murder. Now, bakit magkaiba? Because of Article 62. If you read Article 62, number 3, aggravating circumstances which arise from the moral attributes of the offender or from his private relations with the offended party shall only serve to aggravate the liability of the principal as to whom such circumstances are present. So, kung kanino lang present yung private relations, gaya ng relationship, then doon mag apply ang aggravating circumstance of relationship. Since itong relationship present lamang kay wife, hindi siya mag apply kay paramour. Kaya, sa liability ni wife, parricide. Sa liability ng paramour, homicide or murder. Number two, offenders must have knowledge of the material execution or the means employed to accomplish the act. So, yung mga offenders na merong alam sa material execution or the means employed to accomplish the act, sila lang ang magkakaroon ng aggravated liability. Yung mga walang alam, hindi ma-aggravate ang kanilang liability. For example, A and B conspired to kill X. A was the lookout and B would confront X about his fault and shoot him. A did not know that B employed treachery in killing X. What is the crime committed? Or what are the crimes committed? A is liable for homicide only under Article 249. Kasi nga, wala siyang alam na gagamitan pala ni B ng treachery ang pagpatay kay X. Ito namang si B, since siya ang nag-employ ng treachery, magiging liable ngayon siya for the crime of murder under Article 248. Now, what is the basis of this? Our basis is still Article 62, Number 4, or Paragraph 4. The circumstances which consist in the material execution of the act or in the means employed to accomplish it shall serve to aggravate the liability of those persons only who had knowledge of them. Number 3. A co-conspirator not present at the scene of the crime because of change of heart is not liable. So kapag hindi siya nagpakita on the day na ikukumit na nila yung crime kasi nagbago yung isip niya or nakonsensa siya, hindi na siya magiging liable. Example, A, B, and C conspired to go to the house of X and kill him the next day. A could not sleep and his conscience bothered him deeply. On the next day, only B and C went to the house of X 
and killed him. A had a change of heart and did not appear. Is A liable for the death of X under the rule, the act of one is the act of all? The answer is no. A is not liable. Kasi nga, we have number three. A co-conspirator co not present at the scene of the crime because of change of heart is not liable. Now, there are also cases in which yung isa sa mga conspirator hindi siya present sa scene of the crime pero liable pa rin siya. Now, when will a co-conspirator be still liable even if he did not go to the scene of the crime? When yung co-conspirator na yon ay siya yung mastermind at hindi siya pumunta sa scene of the crime. Dahil sa mastermind siya, then you apply the general rule that the act of one is the act of all. So that's it. Uh, once again, thank you for listening. I appreciate your time and sana marami kayong natutunan and study hard and pray harder. Thank you very much.